The minority in parliament, Dr. Kesola Tofosin, has demanded that a forensic audit be conducted into the Electoral Commission's voter registration database, indicating the register is riddled with irregularities. But the majority leader, Alexander Fenyu Markin, has urged his colleague to be mindful of partisan comments regarding the election body. I would want to plead with my respected colleagues to say that the Electoral Commission's register for the 2024 election is not credible, is very rich. Let's not attack the Electoral Commission and erode the confidence that people have in the Electoral Commission and our democracy. The issue of Galamse and its negative effect took center stage on the floor of Parliament with some MPs accusing each and are of causing more damage to Ghana's water bodies. Other issues of national concerns took the attention of MPs who had returned to consider specific issues. Anybody, whether you are a religious person, you are a traditional person, you are a politician, you are a flag bearer or an MP who politicizes Galamse operations in this country, this house must take action on that person. By tomorrow, the minister should appear before parliament to brief us what they are doing to address these import, uh, uh, serious problems. I would want to urge all of us to pursue this matter and not make those civil society organizations helpless. It's a serious matter. Are we now going to process seawater to drink? It will cost the nation. The tragic death of Edward Bukete Saki, a final year student at Ureli Senior High School, has sparked outrage and renewed scrutiny over the alleged negligence of school authorities. Edward, who was fatally stabbed by a fellow student on campus, was reportedly left unattended to until other students intervened to transport him to a nearby health facility where he died. This latest incident adds to a growing list of student fatalities, raising urgent concerns about safety in senior high schools. 2023 State Ownership Report has revealed that four state-owned enterprises have consistently recorded losses over a five-year period. From 2019 to 2023, Director General for State Interest and Governance Authority John Buedu explained that some of these losses are necessary in order for the state to keep providing certain essential services, service to the citizenry. They are also the ones that make a lot of the losses because of the space they find themselves. So you can see companies like ECG, uh, Ghana Water have not only the financial or profit making function, they also have a function that ensures that the citizenry also benefit from the services that they provide. And you can see that clearly, that it is because of some of those uh, 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 services that they provide that lead to these losses that they make. Uh, as more news on 3news.com, make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, the battleground in the Ashanti region, the stronghold of the NPP, and, they, and also the movements that we are seeing right now, some less than three months election 2024, is a focus for tonight here on your election command center. Very interesting turn of events as the NPP seeks to do something unprecedented. And, well, as you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. I mean, uh, if you've monitored elections from 1992 up until now, you would know for sure that the NPP does not struggle, doesn't lose any sweat winning the Ashanti region. Obviously, that's their World Bank, that's their stronghold, and there are a number of things they've had to do going into this election to galvanize support for the party in the Ashanti region. But then again, take a look at the trends.
and it tells a, a story that we are not surprised about. From 1996 all the way to 2020, you should pay attention to the, the winning margins that the MPP has posted over the period. 65.8% in 1996 in the Ashanti region for presidential, at least. In the year 2000, John Ejekum Kufour polled 74.8% of the total valid vote cast in the Ashanti region. In 2004, they had the highest votes for the presidential in the Ashanti region, 77%. And then 2008, it dwindled to 72.5%. That's when Nana Branko had showed up. Then in 2012, it dwindled again down to 70.9%. The MPP lost that election. John Mahama won. In 2016, take a look at it. When Nana Branko had won that election, the Ashanti, region, the Ashanti region showed up strongly for the party, 76.3%. But in 2020, there was a dwindle or a drop in the total valid vote cast for the MPP in the Ashanti region, the stronghold of the party, 71.6%, as against in 2016 when they won that election with 76.3%. Then it stands to reason exactly what's going on. But then again, if you see, every time there's a drop in the votes for the NPP in the stronghold, the NDC appreciates in, in the valid vote cast. 26.08% is what the NDC polled in the Ashanti region with an additional seat in parliament, right? But then again, if you look at how things have played out, especially when it comes to the trends over the period for the region, it tells a different story. The NDC is seeking to have a, an edge and then also increase their showing in the Ashanti region. You've heard a number of them, the likes of Mohamed Muntaka Mubarak talk about 30% for the party um, between 30 and 35 percent, all things being equal. The NPP wants to do something unprecedented. They want to win the Ashanti region with 85 percent. That's the target for the Ashanti region going into this election, 85 percent. It's never happened. You see that? Even though they've won this region, it's their stronghold. It's unprecedented. But this is what Ma Matthew Poco Prempe said when he was outdoored in the Ashanti reading just some couple of months ago that that's the target of the party. Take a look. I could send another doctor for the number of four years. I'm a doctor, Bob, and it's Dr. Bob, you have to be a doctor. You have to have a man. You have to have a top of that. What's that we do? Which year, President Mr. Carl said, you have to have a day. Yes, I do have to have a day. I do have to have a day. It's here per 85 percent. You have to have 75 in the bureau. We see you have a day. 85 percent. We see you have a day. 85 percent. I said, you have 85 now. And then pay for the man must share there. Obia, what MPP mu? I was in fear of change. Obia, I ne bone. Obia, kasi anti ano. The MPP has seen you on TV dano. And tomorrow will be exactly two months that Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe was announced, or as it were, presented and eventually approved by the party's council. Um, that's uh, the uh, Alisa Hotel here in Accra, even before the unveiling eventually in the Ashanti region. But then again, look at this. In the year 2020, when we saw that drop to 71%, the NPP now wants to increase this to 85%. That's the target going into this, this election year. One of the other reasons why they chose Dr. Matthew Poko Prepa, apart from this, was to galvanize the base of the party. As to whether that's happening right now, we'll have a conversation on that shortly. But let's go into the polls now. What are the polls saying? Because beyond this, Global Info Analytics has been testing the pulse of the Ashanti region three months to the election 2024. They did this poll in the month of August. It shows a number of things and a number of questions that they asked. There was a 95% confidence level for this poll that polled some 3,500 people from 14 constituencies in the Ashanti region. Take a look at this. A number of the questions they asked. It says, how likely will Dr. Matthew Poko Prempe's nomination influenced their vote. In July, 
about 58% of the respondents said it would likely influence them. In August, it shot up to 59%. But if you see those who say it is unlikely to also influence their, their decision on who to whether to vote for the MPP or not, it also increased as well. The neutrals have it in there as well. When it comes to the direction of the country, in the Ashanti region, in these 14 constituencies that Global Analytics did their poll, 48% of the rep respondents say the country is headed in the right direction. Guess what? 47% in the strong goal of the NPP say the country is headed also in the run that's in the right direction in the month of August. But take a look at this. In the month of July, 47% of the respondents said the country is headed in the wrong right direction. In the month of August, 50% of the respondents say the country is headed in the wrong direction. That's an increase from 47 to 50% between July and August. And this July poll was done two days after Dr. Matupoku Pempe was un unveiled as the party's running mate going into this election. I'll take a look at this. Based on Global Info Analytics polls, in the month of April, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the question was asked if the elections were, was held in the month of April, what would the showing be in the Ashanti region? 54% of the respondents in the month of April, said they were going to vote for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya in the Ashanti region. Fast forward to the month of July, it increased to 65.4%. That's when Dr. Matthew Poko Pempe was announced as the running mate to the flag bearer. In August, between 28th and 30th of August, when Global Analytics went back to the Ashanti region, that has increased to 67%. Though the respondents who say they're going to vote for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, that is way below the 85% that they say they want to win in the Ashanti region. And you understand why they are doing it. They, they have the target of 85%. If you get it, the work that you have to do in the other regions is quite lower for you to even win the election. But look at what the NDC is also having a showing there. John Mahama, in April, 31% of the respondents said they were going to vote if the elections were head, held in the month of April in the Ashanti region. July, it dropped to 23.7%. Now, guess what? In August, it's increased to 27.6% of the respondents saying if the elections were held in the month of August, 27.6% of the respondents in the Ashanti region say they're going to vote for the NDC. But the movement for change, Alan Chamanting, and it's instructive that we put him there because that's his home region as well. And there are many people who say that if the NPP has anything to worry about, they should also be worried about Alan Kojo Chamanting. They've always watered down the effect of Alan Chamanting, but then again, take a look at this. It's putting up a showing there as well. Musa Dankwa is executive director of Global Info Analytics. He's joining us on Zoom for a conversation on what we are seeing right now and whether this 85% votes for the NPP, their target, is going to be realized. So, Danko, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. From your analysis, has the NAPO effect started playing out already for the NPP or to their advantage? Because we do know that's one of the major objectives they had, selecting him to galvanize the base of the party in the stronghold to help them achieve the 85% that they, they, they want to get in the elections. Is it happening already? Uh, Alfred, um, there are two ways of looking at this. One is to look at the overall effect in the region, and then also the overall effect within the MPP base. I think if you look at his impact on the MPP base in Ashanti region, I think he's doing well, because in between uh, July and um, or between August and September, the poll we just did, it shows that among uh, those who are MPP, Mohamed Baumia's numbers went up nearly 4% compared to the uh, August poll. He has increased in the base, MPP base. But then if you look at the floating voters who appear to be a sizable population of the Ashanti voters now, about 12% or 15%, in the floating voters, that is where I think the effect is becoming a drag because um, it appears that uh, Baumia's support among the floating voters uh, is shifting in Ashanti region. And uh, this can be attributed to the effect of the tickets. I, I see. Now, 
there are two things that you, you say in here that yes, the Napo effect is playing out. You know, it's, in, it's actually you're seeing it. It's having an impact in the region. But then again, in terms of the floating voters in the stronghold of the party in the Ashanti region, Dr. Bamiya, per your poll, is losing grounds in there as well. One of the major objectives in selecting Dr. Matupoku Pepe as his running mate was to galvanize the base of the party to help them achieve this 85% target for the Ashanti region, as you heard Dr. Matupoku Pepe saying there. We have 94 days to the election, December 7th. From the latest poll that you just did in the month of August, which we are seeing this outcome, 67, will this 85% target be achieved based on what you know? Absolutely not. Um, it is not an achievable target. If you look at the current poll we just did, um, Dr. Baumia is on 67%, Mahama on 28%. Alan on 3%, Bediak 1%, and the rest of the candidates 1%. Now, look at the numbers now, 67, 67, compared to 85. It's way, 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 way over. For them to even hit 80%, they need um, Baumia, so they need Mahama and Alan to collapse totally in the region. And we know that will not happen because Mahama's numbers are solid. Mm -hmm. They are core MPP, uh, NDC people who come what may, they will come and vote. Those who are not willing to vote in the region are mostly MPP uh, voters. I, I see. You, you put an emphatic no to the 85% target that the MPP has for its stronghold, Ashanti region, in this election. As we saw, the historical analysis, the trend we've seen over the period from 92 to date, the highest they had was about 77%. They want to do something unprecedented. And you're saying, based on your polls and how you're projecting for the next three months, this 85% is not possible? Yes, I do. And uh, because none of the polls that we have carried out recent times with the exception of the first announcement of NAPO, where Baumia hit a 73%. And since then, the numbers have declined and then went up marginally this time. So the numbers have not been very great. And remember, in the first poll that he got 73, Muhammad was 15%. And NDC has never gotten 15%. So we expect Muhammad to be in the mid 20s, uh, upper 20s, maybe 30% in this election. And if that happens, it is not possible to see how they can manage even 80%. That's, that's a, a very interesting and instructive statement that you make there. Uh, based on the details of your poll you see now and the dynamics, especially in the floating voters area, you don't, you don't see this 85% target by the MPP be, being achieved. But how about Alan Chimanting as well? Because from the polls that you've done in April and July and also in August, is one potent threat to the MPP in the stronghold, is it not? Because that's his home region as well. But then again, I see that he has lost some grounds based on the latest poll that you put out, dropping to a little over 3% in or amongst the persons that you polled. What's accounting for that? Again, it's in the floating voters. And I think things are conspiring against Allah somehow. Um, it appears people want to be resolute. I mean, when you, sp you speak to voters over the phone or even in the field, the feedback we get is that some have uh, a fear Alan may not necessarily win. And for that matter, they, they, they are cautious in terms of voting for him, even though they like him. So you could see in some cases people prefer him, but when it comes to voting for him, then you see them taking some other decisions. And I believe that is what is going to uh, disturb Alan and me. He must be forceful and more uh, uh, direct with the people and telling them why they should vote for him and why voting for him is not a waste, uh, wasted vote. And I think that he has to do a lot more of that. Otherwise, people will flee his column into Muhammad's column. And that's what we have seen in the Shanti region. In fact, in the uh, poll in the region, he dropped nearly 6%. And 71% of that drop 
in terms of overall numbers, went to John Mahama in the Ashanti region. That is why Mahama went from nearly 24% to 28% in the poll. Mr. Danko, I appreciate your time, and we remain your election command center. Some 94 days to election day 2024. And we'll keep how things play out in the Ashanti region, especially keep an eye on that here on your election command center.